to our Monday Thursday worship. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Trusting in God's wondrous love revealed in the cross of Christ, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and we have not been faithful to the covenant that you made with us in baptism. We have trusted in ourselves rather than in your promises. We have not loved one another as you have loved us. We have failed to live as your holy people in the world and have ignored the cries of the poor and needy. Have mercy on us and forgive our sins that we may know your love and give praise to your holy name. Amen. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, your son, Jesus Christ, 
our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from Exodus chapter 12. Israel remembered its deliverance from slavery in Egypt by celebrating the festival of Passover. This festival featured the Passover lamb whose blood was used as a sign to protect God's people from the threat of death. The early church described the Lord's Supper using imagery from the Passover, especially in portraying Jesus as the lamb who delivers God's people from sin and death. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of this year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb the same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head and legs and inner organs. You shall, not, you shall let none of it remain until the morning, but anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, with your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly, as it is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down the very every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals, on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute my judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as it is a perpetual, perpetual ordinance. So the Passover goes back all the way to the time when the Jews were slaves in Egypt, long even, more, multiple centuries ago, millennia ago and they had had to suffer, they had to work building the pyramids. They cried out to God and God sent Moses. God sent a deliverer. And in this deliverance, which is described here after the plagues, which forced Pharaoh to give in and say, you may leave, you may, you may leave Egypt, you will no longer be slaves here, then they were on the night of before their departure to have this very special meal. And the meal is described to some extent as we heard. But what's important about it is they're expected to leave right away. They have to be going. And so they have to eat and then be ready to move. But what they eat is very special. It's a lamb or a goat and it's, it's young and it's those special kind of requirements, but what happens with the blood that is taken from that lamb is that it will be put above the doorposts of, of the house of the Hebrew people. And because of that blood that is over the door, the angel of death will pass over. They will be spared. They will not die. 
and they will be ready to go on this journey to freedom. And so the remembrance of this is it's a feast of freedom. And it's knowing that God's people moved from slavery to freedom. And as we hear this and we know the connection to the Lord's Supper, which is exactly what Jesus was sharing. He was sharing this very same meal, remembering this exact meal with his disciples. But what Jesus does is it is transformed and it becomes a movement from slavery to sin to forgiveness and freedom. And this is also a meal of deliverance. It was remembering how they were delivered from death in Egypt and death on that night, but, but also the death of oppression and that God set them free and they could journey to the promised land. And also for us, it is a reminder of the Lord's Supper is also a deliverance from death for our sake because Jesus gives his very own body and his own blood. Our Psalm is Psalm 116, verse one and two and 12 through 19. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer you a thanksgiving sacrifice and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Our next reading is from 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 through 26. In the bread and cup of the Lord's Supper, we experience intimate fellowship with Christ and with one another because it involves his body given for us and the new covenant in his blood. Faithful participation in the meal is a living proclamation of Christ's death until he comes in the future. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remember, in remembrance. Again, Jesus was sharing a meal of remembrance with his disciples, a remembrance of the Passover, a Seder meal, a very special meal, a celebration of freedom, and deliverance. And then that meal, Jesus transformed. He never says of himself that he is the Passover lamb, but the church grew to understand that just as the blood of that lamb over the doorpost spared the people inside from death, that Jesus' blood shed for us also spares us from death. Also for forgiveness, also to become a new community. So remember, 
If you remember something, you might say that that is to call something to mind. It's also when we are asked to remember, remember, of course, what Jesus did, did on the cross, but also remember the love that Jesus shared, the healing that Jesus gave. Remember, again, the absolute gift of love that he showed us by giving up his very life, his body and his blood to save us, to forgive us, to restore us as God's people. And so we remember that this night and we remember that what Jesus did then is still very present, still changes us and changes our lives today. And the words that are very important to hear anytime we share communion and the words are for you, that this is a gift of freedom and deliverance and forgiveness for you. gospel is from John chapter 13, 1 through 17 and 31 through 35. The story of the Last Supper in John's gospel recalls a remarkable event not mentioned anywhere else. Jesus performs the duty of a slave, washing the feet of his disciples and urging them to do the same for one another. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. 
If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Jesus begins, and we hear in this passage is at the beginning, that Jesus loved those that were given to him and loved them to the end. And then it goes on to mention about Judas, who is preparing to betray him. I think, though, that even though it highlights that about what Judas, Judas is about to do, he's not excluded when it says he loved them to the end. I believe it's also teaching that even the one who would be the betrayer is loved by Jesus. John's gospel is the one that gives us the famous passage, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And it continues to say that God does not want any to perish. And I like to hope, even though Judas did this terrible act of betrayal, that, that yet still somehow, perhaps, perhaps, the love of God even, even reached to Judas. But Jesus takes an opportunity to, to give a visual uh, example, I guess, of, of that kind of love, of that love of laying down your life for someone else's sake. This, what Jesus does here, it's a, it's a huge act of hospitality, but it's an act of hospitality that the master or the lord of the house would call upon a slave and not just any slave, this is a job that would tend to fall to the lowliest slave in the entire household. And yet Jesus takes on that humble, humble duty, that humble position. As it says, he, he laid, he took off his outer robe. He laid down his robe. He took up a towel and he goes around to wash the disciples' feet and wipe it with the towel. We'll hear that he then encourages the disciples to follow his example. And that reminds me that just recently we heard a reading from John chapter 12 where Mary used her own hair, pouring a very expensive ointment, oil, fragrant oil on Jesus' feet, used her own hair, and it used the same word, to wipe Jesus' feet. She is actually doing what Jesus now is doing for his own disciples. She, she was already living in the way of a, of a disciple of Jesus. And so he continues to go around one by one to wash each of the disciples' feet. We don't know what they were thinking, but uh, good old Peter, he's never shy of speaking up or voicing his opinion. And so when he gets around to Peter, Peter is, says, oh, Lord, you know, he, he's, he's taken aback. I think perhaps part of it is that this is such a huge role reversal in, in Peter's way of thinking is, you know, Jesus is the Lord, Jesus is the master. This, this isn't right, Lord. This is, you're not supposed to be doing this. This is not, not your position. Perhaps, too, though, there might have been a part of Peter thinking, I'm not worthy. How, how can I allow this? I, this is too much. Perhaps those are things that he was, he was thinking. And when Jesus, though, says, uh, you, if you're not going to let me do this, you have no part of me. Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Now, the Gospel of John has lots of layers and um, meanings that are woven in. And this does seem 
perhaps, I think, even though on this night we tend to focus very much on uh, the gift of Holy Communion and the Lord's Supper, um, this points toward baptism, that belonging to Christ, being connected to Christ is something that is ours through the gift of baptism. And then Peter says, but P Peter doesn't quite know that yet. That's, that's again, that's like a, like a subtext going on here. In the meantime, Peter is, oh, well wait, if that's the case, if I need to be, have my feet washed, then wash, wash me from head to toe, Lord. I wanna, you know, once he, he grasps to some extent, though not really, he says, oh, I'm all in. That's the thing about Peter. Again, he, he never holds back. He, whatever he commits, he commits to wholeheartedly, absolutely. And, and I love that um, really about, about Peter. Again, he opens his mouth a bit too fast sometimes, and this might be one of those situations, but there's no doubt whatever, whatever Peter thinks, he lets you know. Well, then Jesus says that part, that one who's bathed, he's, he says, you don't need all of you washed. In a sense though, this is more about the opportunity to lead into that statement that one of you, you are clean, meaning you are part of this community, you, you belong, you, you are in relationship with me is what Jesus is saying, but there's one who has begun to separate, who is, who is choosing to leave this relationship and, and that's, that's what it's talking about when he says not all of you are clean it's that acknowledgement of what Judas is, is about to do. So then when he's concluded this, he puts his robe back on. Jesus is very much in control, even as he does this extremely humble act of service. But it is in that absolute trust, that sense of knowing that he is doing God's will his identity is based in who he is in relationship to God. And so there is such absolute security in that, that he doesn't have to think about what would others think? How would others judge what, this, what Jesus is doing? That uh, who would have thought of it perhaps as something shameful beneath him. And again, Jesus doesn't have to look at it that way because he already knows who he belongs to and also his great love that he wants to show in this manner to his own disciples. But then he invites them and us to follow his example, to follow in the way of agape love, which is a way of humbleness, a way of unconditional love, a way of looking out for the good of the other the one who is the, where we will give the love, that's who we care about. That's where our full focus is. Not at all what, any idea of whatever might be in it for us, but fully what is the best, what is the good for the other because we know they are loved by God and now we too are invited by Jesus to participate in that love that God showed through Jesus. And then as we are made into the body of Christ, as we do share in the Lord's Supper, not only the gift of his body, but becoming the body of Christ on this earth, through whom that amazing love of God can be shared.
join with me in speaking these words. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.